So here's a subject that may interest some people. This here is an I1 display colorimeter by X-Rite. Just incidentally, I've discovered it has a little magnet on the side for a reason I have not been able to discern, but I only found that out because it actually wound up getting this screw stuck to it on my desk. So the way this works is it's got a big lens and presumably there's like a very few pixel, maybe 16 pixel or even as few as 4 pixel image sensor down there and then you put it against your LCD and it measures the color and does color calibration. I had a lot, a lot of fun telling people at work that I bought a $250 one pixel digital camera and people would definitely look rather bewildered at you if you told them that. So as you can see it's got this cute little neutral density or, or diffusion filter and that actually allows it to be mounted on a little tripod and then you can point it at an LCD projector or any sort of projector and it will also color calibrate your projector. This is not unfortunately a, a photo spectrometer um, which means it can't calibrate printers or anything like that. It's only good for because it's a colorimeter which means it uses a CCD and lens arrays rather than a, a photo spectrometer which actually uses a prism to break it down and then it integrates over like a linear CCD or some mechanism like that. I'm actually not sure how photospectrometers work internally. I mean I know the rough concept but I haven't actually seen this side one. So the downside is that it means it only works against known light sources like it can calibrate LED displays and CCFL displays but if you have another display like a plasma display, though I don't think anyone does, it's a little confused by that. So. This should be fairly interesting internally because I believe it actually acts as a HASP because I know it definitely, like their calibration software is apparently expensive or proprietary and or the management at the company responsible for it is a total bunch of assholes. So if you don't have the... So if you don't actually have this device plugged in, it um a lot of the functions of the software won't work, which is kind of stupid because the software is effectively useless without the device. But no, they had to install a whole license manager and it spawns processes and wants to run in the background all the time and other typically obnoxious crap from people who seem to think that, you know, protecting their software is more important than making their customers happy because, you know, software is important, but keeping the customers coming back, oh, that doesn't matter. So I think... The whole thing probably just largely snaps together, and it appears I'm correct. That's interesting. It looks like it has facilities for multiple light pipes or something. We also have... How are you held together? Oh, I see. So the whole thing is kind of multiple layers of plastic snaps. Wonderful. Whatever happened to screws? There is the other side. It's just got little plastic grabbies. So what holds this in? Oh, I see. So I think it has four little plastic snaps. Yep. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Need to remember to get cash out of the ATM tomorrow. And if I didn't write it somewhere, I would forget, and then things would be really awkward. Oops. I think, there we go. And oh my, look at that, there is not much in there, is there? So there is the entirety of a 300 or $250 x right colorimeter. It has three chips. Let's see if we can make out what these are. So that right there is, it's a PIC-18! PIC-18F14K50 and we have a 24LC545 or 6. Stop focusing on the wrong section of the board, YouTube. Okay. 24LC641 EE Prom, and that almost definitely stores 
calibration offsets for this very specific sensor. So the sensors are all factory calibrated, you know, against like a known reference light source, and then they have to store the calibration, you know, information for this sensor only before it's made off to the factory. On the other side, we have a couple capacitors and a crystal, a couple resistors. There's a big tan. That's probably the power supply bypass. It's interesting. There's a few unpopulated footprints over there: diode D3, D4, and D5. That's almost definitely in-system programming, and you can even... That's a via in a pad, that's bad design. You can see there's fiducials here, here, and here. And then these are the LEDs. So it looks like the way this thing actually works... I was noticing there's two sections of the light pipe. So it looks like the LEDs are actually right here, and they shine into the light pipe. That gets reflected down and then lights up the outside of the case. Sorry, I've got it backwards. They shine in down here and then it flows up the light pipe and then reflects off this 45 degree angle and then lights up this little section because it does pulse fancily and all sorts of jazz when it's running. So it appears the sensor is held on by three screws. Fortunately, I have a nice compact Phillips head screwdriver. Let's see, does this fit it? There you go. I want to be really careful because, again, this was $250 and I do use it. Joy. I have a big 30 inch LCD and it definitely needs to be color calibrated, or it certainly looks different after it's color calibrated. Oops. So let's let's do it all the way, so there we go. Oh my, look at that. It's got individual light sensors. Wow, take a look at that. So we have three separate illuminance meters and space for a fourth. I wonder what the fourth one is there for. U1, U2, and U3. And then there are separate color filters right over there. Presumably the fourth would be transparent for the more expensive model. Then there's an O-ring that seals it on there. I wonder what part those are. Those look like just the off-the-shelf light meters like you see in smartphones. They've only got four pins. And I don't, I mean, they must be digital output. Got a big surface area. I can't make out if it's. I can't tell if they actually have individual photosites on there, or if it's just one single photosite. You know, they may have. Like I know there's a couple illumination sensors that have RGB pixel arrays on them. Let's see. So this appears to come out. So there is another lens, and then it looks like there's actually an internal diffuser, which I think I could see from the other side. You can make out, like if you look straight down in, that one appears it just fell out. Yeah, it did. So if you look straight down in, you could see a white circle, and now I can in fact see stuff. You can see a, so now it's, you can see through it. So this appears to be the diffuser. So it looks like it internally diffuses, so it can look at a couple pixels rather than being precisely focused. I'll just blow it off with some canned air before putting it back together. I think it goes in... Nope, I guess not. Let's see which way do you fit in here. Maybe it goes that way. Yes. It just sits back in there. So then here we have the color filter array. So you've got... It's interesting, you can see these are these they're dichroic filters. Because they're one color when you look through them, and they're a completely other color when you get the light reflected off it, which means they're using thin film interference to select colors. 
rather than like a pigment that just absorbs. So presumably they actually reflect the other colors back, which would actually mean possibly that they get reflected back, reflect off that, and affect the other sensors, but I would imagine that's all calibrated out. Oops. Well, I think I figured out how to remove that easily. Okay. Okay, there you go. Anyways, that was in there. Just like that. Oops. Well, I guess you can see there's a piece of plastic film and then a spacer. Just a little trileated spacer. Let's see if I can't get that to settle in. Use the little plastic lead. And finally. That's interesting. That is not a typical lens. That is an aspheric lens. It's definitely not a normal lens profile. On either side, I think it looks kind of more like a teardrop. I wonder if there's something interesting going on there. Because, I mean, they are diffusing just from a white source, so I wouldn't think they'd need... Maybe it does something clever. This presume this rather apparently only fits in in one direction. I think it's that one. Yep. So then we'll just put this back in. This is a 12 megahertz crystal. 12.0 TXC and a little O-ring. Let me just blow this off before I put it back together. Hopefully without sending the O-ring flying. Just sets back on top of there. It has two very fine little alignment lugs that sit into the board. Let's go back in. I'm not quite putting it tight yet. It certainly appears they've gone the budget route, because it looks like they're not really bothering with anything. It's all just one pick, an EE prom, and everything else is apparently done in software, and I mean, I can't even imagine those are outputting digital signals, because that you'd need a whole lot more precision to do that. The only thing I don't know about is this U8, which may just be an LDO, because I think, I don't remember correctly, but pick 18s may want 3.3 volts. And it's only got five pins. And you've just got these two little white LEDs, one right here and one right here, that light up the casing, and that's it. It's a little inductor. There's a serial number with a barcode. Oh, look at that, there's actually a transistor there. I bet that switches the LEDs little tiny package. It's like the modified small RTO-92. Alright, well anyways. Here's the case and you can see they've actually bothered to put a, a threaded insert, which is nice, rather than just saying, you know, having you screw the tripod into plastic, which never ends well. Some logos in there. PO plus ABS. Oh, PC plus ABS, which means I guess that these are... This is probably polycarbonate. like it's nice and tight. The case just slides on rather nicely. Or not. What am I hitting? No, oh, it only goes on one way. My bad. It just snaps in. And there you are. And these side panels just go back on.
kind of plasticky feeling. But, you know, I guess it does what it says on the tin. Oh! Okay, yeah, so that transistor I saw, that's not a transistor, that's a Hall effect sensor. Because I remember now, because it can detect when this is closed. So what that's doing is that magnet is going proximate to that Hall effect sensor, which is right here. And that's how it knows whether this is like this or like this. Because it can, it can actually detect when you've opened or closed the arm. So that's actually rather a neat piece of design. So they've got that little Hall effect and then it, when, you want it to cal when it wants you to calibrate it, it, you know, and if it's sitting like this, it says remove the cover and then you remove the cover and then the software goes okay and then it does its thing. So anyways, a little bit dusty. You can see it's got felt here for putting it, because you're gonna, it's gonna come in direct contact with the screen to block out environment light. So there you go. A very expensive three pixel digital camera.